Agathus suffered martyrdom at Catania in Sicily, probably during the persecution of Decius. From antiquity, her cult spread throughout the church. Her name was therefore inserted into the Roman canon. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him, the dry land too, for it was formed by his hand. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Meribah and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Forty years I endured that generation. I said they are people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Around the throne, a glorious band. The saints in countless numbers stand. Of every tongue redeemed to God. Arrayed in garments washed in blood. Through tribulation, great they came. They bore the cross, despised the shame. From all their labors, now they rest. In God's eternal glory, bless. Show me your mercy, Lord, and keep me safe. Lord, do not reprove me in your anger. Punish me not in your rage. Lord, heal me, my body is wrecked, my soul is wrecked with pain. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, Lord, rescue my soul. Save me in your merciful love, for in death no one remembers you. From the grave who can give you praise, <coughs> I am exhausted with my body. Every night I drench my pillow with tears. I bedew my bed with weeping. Why I was away with me? I have grown all surrounded by my foes. Lead me all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord will accept my prayer. All my foes will retire in confusion, toil and suddenly confounded. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
The poor are not alone in their distress. God is here to help them. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will recount all your wonders. I will rejoice in you and be glad. And sing songs to your name, O Most High. See how my enemies turn back, how they stumble and perish before you. You upheld the justice of my cause. You sat and found judging your justice. You have checked the justice of my cause. You have sat and thrown judging with justice. You have checked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have wiped out their name forever and ever. The foe is destroyed eternally ruined. You have rooted their cities and the rain has perished. But the Lord sits in throne forever. He has set up his throne for judgment. He will judge the world with justice. He will judge the peoples with his truth. For the affairs of the Lord he has stronghold, a stronghold in times of distress. Those who know your name will trust you. You will never forsake those who seek you. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will be the herald of your praises, Lord, where the people of Zion gather. Sing songs to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim his mighty works among the peoples. For he has learned your blood, has remembered them, has not forgotten the cry of the poor. Have pity on me, Lord, see my sufferings, you who saved me from the gates of death. That I may recount all your praise at the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your saving help. The nations have fallen in the pit which they made, their feet caught in the snare they laid. The Lord has revealed himself and given judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. Let the wicked go down among the dead. All the nations forgetful of God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hopes of the poor be hidden. Arise, Lord, let <coughs> them not prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Lord, strike them with terror. Let the nations know they are but men. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give me insight, Lord, to know your will, and I will cherish it with all my heart. Then the letter to the Galatians. You have heard, I know, the story of my former way of life in Judaism. You know that I went to extremes in persecuting the Church of God and tried to destroy it. I made progress in Jewish observance far beyond most of my contemporaries in my excess of zeal to live out all the traditions of my ancestors. But the time came when he who had set me apart before I was born and called me by his favor chose to reveal his son to me, that I might spread among the Gentiles the good tidings concerning him. <clears throat> Immediately, without seeking human advisors or even going to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before me, I went off to Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. Three years after that, I went up to Jerusalem to get to know Cephas, with whom I stayed 15 days. 
I did not meet any other apostles except James, the brother of the Lord. I declare before God that what I have just written is true. Thereafter, I entered the regions of Syria and Cilicia. The communities of Christ in Judea had no idea what I looked like. They had only heard that he who was formerly persecuting us is now preaching the faith he tried to destroy, and they gave glory to God on my account. Then, after fourteen years, I went up to Jerusalem again with Barnabas, this time taking Titus with me. I went, prompted by a revelation, and I laid out for their scrutiny the gospel as I presented to the Gentiles, all this in private conference with the leaders, to make sure the course I was pursuing or had pursued was not useless. Not even Titus, who was with me, was ordered to undergo circumcision, despite his being a Greek. Certain false claimants to the title of brother were smuggled in. They wormed their way into the group to spy on the freedom we enjoy in Christ Jesus, and thereby to make slaves of us, but we did not submit to them for a moment. We resisted so that the truth of the gospel might survive intact for your benefit. Those who were regarded as important, however, and it makes no difference to me how prominent they were, God plays no favorites, made me add nothing. On the contrary, recognizing that I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, just as Peter was for the circumcised, for he who had worked through Peter as his apostle among the Jews had been at work in me for the Gentiles. And recognizing, too, the favor bestowed on me, those who were the acknowledged pillars, James, Cephas, and John, gave Barnabas and me the handclasp of fellowship, signifying that we should go to the Gentiles as they to the Jews. The only stipulation was that we should be mindful of the poor, the one thing that I was making every effort to do. By the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace in me has not been in vain. It was the power of God which made Peter an apostle for the Jewish people, and it was his power which made me an apostle for the Gentiles. His grace in me has not been in vain. From a homily on St. Agatha by St. Methodius of Sicily, Bishop. My fellow Christians, our annual celebration of a martyr's feast has brought us together. She achieved renown in the early church for her noble victory. She is well known now as well, for she continues to triumph through her divine miracles, which occur daily and continue to bring glory to her name. She indeed is a virgin, for she was born of the divine word of God's only Son, who also experienced death for our sake. John, a master of God's word, speaks of this. He gave the power to become children of God to everyone who received him. The woman who invites us to this banquet is both a wife and a virgin. To use the analogy of Paul, she is the bride who has been betrothed to one husband, Christ. A true virgin, she wore the glow of pure conscience and the crimson of the Lamb's blood for her cosmetics. Again and again, she meditated on the death of her eager lover. For her, Christ's death was recent. His blood was still moist. Her robe is the mark of her faithful witness to Christ. It bears the indelible marks of his crimson blood and the shining threads of her eloquence. She offers to all who come after her these treasures of her eloquent confession. Agatha, the name of our saint, means good. She was truly good, for she lived as a child of God. She was also given as the gift of God, the source of all goodness to her bridegroom Christ and to us. For she grants us a share in her goodness. What can give greater good than the sovereign good? Whom could anyone find more worthy of celebration with hymns of praise than Agatha? 
Agatha, her goodness coincides with her name and the way of life. She won a good name by her noble death, and by her name she points to the nobility of those deeds. Agatha, her mere name wins all men over to her competency. She teaches them by her example to hasten with her to true good, God alone. But as for me, helped by the Lord, I shall stand firm in proclaiming his praises. He has become my salvation and my consoler. In his mercy, the sinless Lord has consecrated his servant. For she remained pure in his sight. He has become my salvation and my consoler. I lift up my heart to you, O Lord, and you will hear my morning prayer. To my words give ear, O Lord. Give ye to my groaning, attend to the sound of my cries, my King and my God. It is you who I invoke, O Lord, in the morning you hear me. In the morning I offer you my prayer, washing and waiting. You are no God who loves evil, no sinner is your guest. The boastful shall not stand their ground before your face. You feed all who do evil, you destroy all who lie. Let us see from what bloodthirsty you have, the Lord detests. But I, through the greatness of your love, have access to your house. I bow down before your holy temple, filled with awe. We be Lord in your justness, because of those who lie in ways. Make clear your way before me. No truth can be found in their mouths. Their heart is all mischief. Their throat a wide open grave, all honey their speech. All those who protect shall be glad, and bring out their joy. You shall give them and you may rejoice, those who love your name. It is you who bless the just man, Lord. <coughs> you surround him with favor as with a shield. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We praise your glorious name, O Lord our God. Blessed may you be, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Yours, O Lord, our grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. For all in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. You are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor are from you and you have dominion over all. In your hand are power and might. It is yours to give grandeur and strength to all. And for our God we give you thanks, and we praise the majesty of your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> a 
adore the Lord in his holy court. O oh, give the Lord, you sons of God. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Adore the Lord in his holy court. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters. The Lord on the immensity of waters. The voice of the Lord full of power. The voice of the Lord full of splendor. The Lord's voice shattering the cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice flashes flames of fire. The Lord's voice shaking the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice rending the old trees and stripping the forest bare. The God of glory thunders. In his temple they all cry glory. The Lord sat enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. As we have shared much in the suffering of Christ, so through Christ do we share abundantly in his consolation. The Lord is my strength, and I shall sing his praise. The Lord is my strength, and I shall sing his praise. The Lord is my Savior, and I shall sing his praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength, and I shall sing his praise. With a festal spirit, as though to a wedding banquet, Agatha went to prison. In prayer she offered her bitter suffering to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, 
Or you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Savior's faithfulness is mirrored in the fidelity of his witnesses who shed their blood for the word of God. Let us praise him in remembrance of them. You redeemed us by your blood. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs freely embrace death and bear witness to the faith. Give us the true freedom of the Spirit, O Lord. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs profess their faith by shedding their blood. Give us a faith, O Lord, that is constant and pure. We redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs followed in your footsteps by carrying the cross. Help us to endure courageously the misfortunes of life. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs wash their garments in the blood of the Lamb. Help us to avoid the weaknesses of the flesh and worldly allurements. You redeemed us by your blood. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, let your forgiveness be won for us by the pleading of Saint Agatha, who found favor with you by her chastity and by her courage in suffering and death for the gospel. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Good morning. As part of the St. Lord's Novena, we are now praying the rosary in the Dominican form. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. O Lord, open my lips. O come, O God, come to my assistance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
The first joyful mystery is the Annunciation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The second joyful mystery, the visitation. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The third joyful mystery is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The fourth joyful mystery, the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The fifth joyful mystery, the finding of Jesus in the temple. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor vanished children of Eve. 
To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through the Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold now, she follows the Lamb who was crucified for us, powerful in virginity, modesty her offering, a sacrifice on the altar of chastity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Agatha, early martyr, and also continue our novena in honor of Our Lady of Lords. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. May the virgin martyr, St. Agatha, implore your compassion for us, O Lord, we pray, for she found favor with you by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Kings. The elders of Israel and all the leaders of the tribes, the princes in their ancestral houses of the children of Israel, came to King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from the city of David, which is Zion. All the people of Israel assembled before King Solomon during the festival in the months of Ethaniah, the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the ark. They carried the ark of the Lord and the meeting tent with all the sacred vessels that were in the tent. The priests and the Levites carried them. King Solomon and the entire community of Israel present for the occasion sacrificed before the ark sheep and oxen too many to number or count. The priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place 
Beneath the wings of the cherubim in the sanctuary, the holy of holies of the temple. The cherubim had their wings spread out over the place of the ark, sheltering the ark and its poles from above. There was nothing in the ark but the two stone tablets which Moses had put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel at their departure from the land of Egypt. When the priests left the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord so that the priests could no longer minister because of the cloud, since the Lord's glory had filled the temple of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord intends to dwell in the dark cloud. I have truly built you a princely house, a dwelling where you may abide forever. The word of the Lord. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Lord, go up to the place. Behold, we heard of it in Ephratha. We found it in the fields of Ja'ar. Let us enter into his dwelling. Let us worship at his footstool. Lord, go up to the place. Advance, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your majesty. May your priests be clothed with justice. Let your faithful ones shout merrily for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, reject not the plea of your anointed. Lord, go on. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to the land of Gesenaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to whoever they, to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel in his cloak, and as many as were touched were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. much as I'd love to preach on St. Agatha. Uh, the homily is, as part of the novena, uh, on, the, on the mornings of, of these days, is during the, or it's after Mass. So we'll have our Mass, and we'll have the blessing of the relics, we'll have both Jude and Bernadette, and one of us will be in the middle, and Father Jordan will, uh, will be, or one of us will be in the middle, and the other will be on the other side, uh, just, just so that we can kind of go in one direction, in this case, because there's a St. Jude relic and a St. Bernadette relic. Um, I will say this about St. Agatha, is that a century later she was already recognized, as relevant for our novena, as a saint of healing. St. Lucy took her mother on a pilgrimage to St. Agatha's tomb to seek healing for her mother. And St. Agatha appears to her and then in, draws them into a deeper relationship with Christ. And St. Lucy, of course, too, becomes a great martyr. And so, just to say, remember our intentions for this Mass is all of those who, who are observing this novena, all who have put petitions in this novena, all of those seeking healing, as well as for our Masses these days, um, today for our benefactors and those resting here, for the repose of the soul of Lucy, 
Lucchesi, and for David Lawrence there. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth, vine, and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this offerings we bring in celebration of Blessed Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victory Victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Agatha, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Salvatore our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. <laughs> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
for those joining at a distance, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lamb who is at the center of the throne will lead them to the springs of the water of life. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed Agatha a crown among the saints for a twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of the sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain to the glory of heaven 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. In after Mass, I'll be in the middle of the St. Jude relic, and then to one side, the Father uh, Jordan with the relic of St. Bernadette. That way, you can venerate both relics and receive the blessings. After that, Father Jordan will give the homily to the novena. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael.
on page 13 of your programs. You'll find the prayers to Our Lady of Lourdes and St. Jude. And so if you pray with me, O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, you are the refuge of sinners, the help of the sick, and the comfort of the afflicted. You know my wants, my troubles, my suffering. By your appearance at the Grotto of Lourdes, you made it a privileged sanctuary, where your favors are given to people streaming to it from the whole world. Over the years, countless sufferers have obtained the cure for their infirmity, whether of soul, mind, or body. Therefore, I come to you with St. Jude as my patron to implore your motherly intercession. Obtain a loving mother the grant of my request. Through gratitude for your favors, I will endeavor to imitate your virtues, that I may one day share in your glory. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in that great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly and that I might praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jew, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us, and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. The first apparition of our Blessed Mother that happened on Thursday, February 11th in 1858. After dinner on the Thursday before Ash Wednesday, Bernadette told her children that there was no more wood in the house. Bernadette and her sister Tonette and a neighbor friend, Jean Abadia, went to the river Gave to gather wood. They had to cross a canal of cold water and fearing that she would have an asthma attack, Bernadette stayed on the bank, and the two other girls crossed the stream and picked up wood under the grotto until they disappeared along the gavin. Bernadette heard a great noise like the sound of a storm, but nothing was moving. She was frightened and stood up, losing our power of speech and thought. She turned her head towards the grotto and saw in the opening of the rock of rosebush, only one, moving as if it were very windy. Almost at the same time, there came out of the interior of the grotto a golden colored cloud, and soon afterwards, a lady, young and beautiful, exceedingly beautiful, the likes of whom she had never seen, came and placed herself at the entrance of the opening above the rosebush. She looked at Bernadette and immediately smiled and signaled her adva to advance in a way that a mother motions her child to come near. Bernadette took out her rosary and knelt before the lady who had a rosary on her right arm. When Bernadette tried to begin saying the rosary by making the sign of the cross, her arm was paralyzed. It was only after the lady had made the sign of the cross herself that Bernadette was able to do the same. And as Bernadette prayed the rosary, the lady passed the beads of her rosary between her fingers, but remained silent. She did recite the Gloria with her, however. And when the recitation of the rosary was finished, the lady returned to the interior of the rock, and the golden cloud disappeared with her. I think most of us, not all of us, have cell phones now these days. 
And it's amazing what you can do with those cell phones, right? We can talk and text, we can go to the internet. It's amazing that we can make video calls, we can even make videos, and there's all these other things. But there's one particular feature that I really like, and maybe some of you use it too. And it's that feature where we can access the internet with that hotspot. And it makes it available not only on my phone, but on my computer, on my, on my iPad. And it creates, again, as I say, that opportunity to connect. I believe that today's gospel is much like that hot spot, or what I would call a healing spot. And I call it this because just as I can create that wireless hot spot, wherever I go, wherever we go, Jesus used the power of God the Father to create those healing spots wherever he went. And that gospel that we heard today comes right after Jesus does these two incredible miracles. He fed over 5,000 people from five loaves of bread and two fish, and he still had food left over. And then he walked on the Sea of Galilee. And then Jesus and his disciples take a boat again, and they travel through this region called Gennesaret. Gennesaret was somewhat isolated from the other parts of Galilee, and today we might say, or I might say, it was on the edge of cell phone service. And at the time of Jesus, the people who lived in this area were a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. Many were farmers, many were pretty poor. And when Jesus arrived, we are told that people recognize him right away. And so immediately, people came from all over to be healed because they recognized him. People brought the sick to Jesus to be healed because they believed that he could do it. And they would bring him on stretchers or mats or whatever was at hand. And they moved quickly to do this because they didn't want to miss out on that opportunity that day. And so they felt that need to touch him directly. And the folks that wanted healing just wanted to touch the tassels of his cloak, knowing and believing that that was enough to heal them. And I believe that it is. And here's the main point again, that wherever Jesus is, people want to be healed. And then Jesus becomes at that moment the healing spot, the power of God to bring healing and wholeness that radiates from Christ. And so all those who were around him flocked to him. And it's interesting to me, the crowds do a better job of recognizing Jesus more than his disciples. Because in spite of all the miracles, they, the disciples of Jesus still have a difficult time figuring out what they have seen. They have questions and they have uncertainties even after seeing the miracle of the bread and Jesus walking on the water and healing, but they still, the people come to seek that. Now, where do people go to experience healing today? Certainly in prayer, and we may have the doctors and the modern medicine and all those wonderful things that can bring healing, but we must remember, my brothers and sisters, that God is the source of healing. That God is the source of healing, just like at Lord's healing the whole person, healing the body and mind, the spirit, anything that we might be going through, healing also our relationships. And that power of Jesus to heal is still with us today. It certainly is available through the body of Christ, the church. And in many ways, the church is like the tassels that Jesus wore. We have anointing, we have the Eucharist, and we have confession. And so we are the fringe of that cloak, that hot spot, that healing spot, where we sit up as a community and feel the power of God who can bring us healing and who can bring us wholeness. Now, we may not recognize it ourselves, but it is here because Jesus is here. Here is the power to feel the healing power in Jesus Christ. 
As I've said yesterday, the healing power of the risen Christ will remain a mystery, and it does sometimes. We pray for a specific type of healing to take place, and sometimes it will. At other times, it doesn't happen the way that we want to. Sometimes we don't receive that cure that we seek, and sometimes something miraculous will also happen beyond our own understanding. But when you and I bring ourselves in the presence of the risen Christ, somehow we become aware through grace that Jesus is working to bring that healing and that wholeness that God desires. And that's the key. It is what God desires. It is His will, not my will, that I seek. And when we can understand that, we place ourselves in the presence of Christ. For over 166 years, Lourdes, that grotto, and those waters have become a healing spot. Now we know that Mary is the mother of God and our mother. Our mother. She was the one that appeared to St. Bernadette. And St. Teresa of Calcutta has something important to remind us of. And that we all know, and that the saints have said before, that we go to Jesus through Mary. And Mary brings us to the healing spot that is her son. She is that gateway to Jesus. And we, if we're willing to follow her, Mary, as a sure guide, will lead us, especially in those troubled times. There is a powerful connection between the suffering of Lords, the intentions that we bring here with our prayers and resolve, the knowledge, I hope, that God will take care of us, that we can still ask that our prayers be granted. Our Lady of Lourdes is a clear personification of that compassion of God, the mercy that He wants each of us to have and to receive and then to share. And so our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Lourdes, brings comfort. You might remember that Isaiah the prophet speaks about Jerusalem as our mother. And he says, and he writes, Rejoice and exult because of her. Be carried by her and be fondled in her lap. And Mary is that incarnation of this image when you and I rejoice when you and I exult because of her and we come to be comforted by her hope and her faith and her love in God. And we allow her, I hope, to embrace us with that love. And we allow her, I hope, to carry us in life and to comfort and to strengthen us so that we might imitate her charity. Again, at the wedding of Cana, before everyone seemingly knew that there was something wrong, there was a problem, not even the couple knew or the parents, not even the head waiter. But it's right there that our blessed mother care springs right into action and she asked Jesus, Jesus, even though it was not his hour, to work a miracle. And he worked that stupendous miracle as he worked others. And they began to believe in him. Now we are right to bring our needs to our Blessed Mother, asking her to intercede for us with her son. And like at Cana, she already knows the longings of our hearts and that despair that sometimes touches us. Our Lady of Lourdes, constantly, maternal love and vigilance brings our needs before Jesus, even before we know that we need her intercession. There are graces of which we're not aware, and she has gotten her son to work on them without us even knowing about it. And so when Mary appeared to Bernadette, she unleashed this torrent of charity. 
to bring healing to us. And through that intercession again, to bring that healing not only to our bodies, but our spirits. She would ask that a shrine be built so that it could be a house of prayer, so that the sick may come and know of Jesus' healing and also be a place that might bring conversion in their lives. What we celebrate in this novena is a remembrance that Our Lady of Lourdes came to help and to help us be transformed by God so that you and I might continue to seek her son because all of us, we know, we know we're in need. To those who are ill, yes, but in a particular way for all of us who need God's mercy and love. Like the people of Gennesaret, we too come that we might touch the tassel of his cloak. The poor and the sick, yes, are at the center of God's people, but all of us, everyone is precious, and no one, not either any of us, should be discarded, nor are we left behind. And so our Blessed Mother came with a prophetic message, not a new one, but ever is a true one that, need, that is in need of being actualized. It is that message again of healing and mercy that her son Jesus brought to our world. When Pope Benedict went to Lourdes to mark its 150th anniversary of that apparition, and those apparitions, he focused on a very important detail that I think we should hear. And he writes, Pope Benedict noted that when St. Bernadette first asked Our Lady to tell her name, Our Lady didn't respond with words. What she did was respond with a serene smile. And it was that response that was such a fitting introduction to her whole mission. And he, go on, he goes on and writes, In that smile of the first imminent of all creatures, looking down on us is reflected in our dignity as children of God, that dignity that never abandons us, that smile, the true reflection of God's tenderness, that smile, again, that source of invincible hope. Yes, Mary came to Lourdes to smile at us as she does this day. And it is a smile of not only tenderness, but again, as I say, it's one that reminds us of our dignity of how much God loves us and how that divine and human love behind that smile is a reality of our own existence and worth. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that our Blessed Mother wants to help us along the path that will lead us to that smile serenely as that smile of her son. He is the healing spot. And as you and I continue to pray this novena, let us be conscious of Mary smiling down on us. We give thanks for her intercession that has made possible for all of us to be here and to pray this novena. We come to Jesus and we receive Jesus when we come to him for healing. And as we do, let us remember my brothers and sisters that it is Mary, the one who knows God. That it is Mary who comes to dwell, not just among us, but Mary comes to dwell within each of us. If you didn't already know, you may find blank petition slips at the St. Jude Shrine to bring to this novena. Now live stream masses, some of the live masses will be live streamed, but the homilies will be streamed on the St. Jude Shrine and St. Dominic's YouTube channels. 
and links are placed on the Shrine's website and on the mass programs. In, pace, in case you know or you can't come of anyone who can't come in person of some of the nine days of this novena. We give thanks that God gives us a devotion to St. Jude. We are grateful for your generous support and that support that you give us here at the Shrine supports the formation of future Dominican priests and brothers. So I ask that each of you help and promote and expand this devotion to St. Jude. God bless you.